Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that, at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But you, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the children of Israel may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the children of Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the children of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. The prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. Let 
Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nation through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples, See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their way and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways 
my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow came, come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is found on page 81 of the Catholic Book of Worship. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord. Amen.
this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin, but if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin, and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, on the first day of the week, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Tonight, we are concluding with this Mass, the Sacred Triduum, a liturgy that spans three days and includes the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday and the celebration of the Lord's Passion on Good Friday. St. Augustine said of this concluding part of the Sacred Triduum, the Easter Vigil, that it should be considered the mother of all vigils. At the traditional Jewish celebration of the Passover Seder Supper, the youngest child present asked the question, what makes this night different from all other nights? I think such a question is equally appropriate for us Catholics in our celebration of the Easter Vigil. What makes this night different from all other nights? What makes this the mother of all vigils? Tonight, more than any night, we keep watch, awaiting and then celebrating the resurrection of the Lord. In the New Testament reading of tonight's liturgy, we hear Paul's words to the Romans and through them to us. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Tonight is different from all other nights in that we especially celebrate the resurrection. Tonight is the mother of all vigils because tonight we celebrate life conquering death, light conquering darkness, love conquering hate, peace conquering anxiety and strife, mercy conquering sin and punishment, joy conquering fear and doubt. Tonight, we celebrate the resurrection not only as a historical fact of our faith, but also as an attitude in life 
and as a way of living. In the early 70s, Stephen Schwartz and John Michael Tebelak composed a musical that was a contemporary adaptation of the episodes from the Gospel according to Matthew. It was a sort of hippie version of the life and message of Jesus Christ. The musical was entitled Godspell, and it has been produced in many venues, including on Broadway and in a feature-length movie. I heard of one production of this musical that I think had an, did an incredible job of depicting the good news of Christ's resurrection from the dead. Near the end of the musical, Christ dies. As his disciples take him down from the cross, they begin, begin to sing in a very slow and dirge-like way, Long Live God. And as they sing this funeral hymn, they raise the Lord on their shoulders and make a funeral procession going across the stage as if to take him for burial. And as they get to the middle of the stage, all of a sudden, this dirge-like song stops with an incredible banging of drums and the figure of Christ is thrown up into the air by his disciples and comes down landing on his feet and begins this wonderful, jubilant dance as they sing, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And so they're all dancing across the stage as the temple of this song rises and becomes faster and faster. And just as it reaches the point where you think it cannot get any faster, that they cannot keep up with the temple anymore, they run to the back of the stage. And two of the disciples grab the arms of Christ, the Christ figure, they rush to the front of the stage and throw him, hurl him out into the audience. And as he reaches the height of his jump out into the audience, the lights all go out and the play is done. There's darkness and silence for a moment, and then the lights come on, and the musical is done. What a marvelous way of representing artistically the resurrection. Christ jumping into our hearts, jumping into our lives to fill us with the beat of his joy, his jubilation of the resurrection, Alleluia. Imagine yourself as being one of the people in the audience at a performance of that God spell. Imagine the lights coming on and your heart still beating with the pounding of the music in the tempo of the dance. Imagine yourself walking out of that auditorium after the, after the play, still hearing the joy of that music ringing in your ears, still in a joyful shock at the way the play has ended would you be able to keep yourself from talking about it to others? Would you be able to keep yourself from being full of the joy of the message of the resurrection? What the producers of that particular music, musical tried to do in their depiction of the resurrection of the Christ is what we try to do every time we celebrate the Easter Vigil. We come together as people of faith to hear again the story of our salvation from the time of Genesis forward, the way the Lord has worked and the accumulation of the works of the God and the coming of his Son and of his, the salvation that he has won for us. During the days and weeks ahead, we will hear again and again in the scriptures of the resurrected Christ appearing to his disciples and friends, 
and greeting them with the words, Do not be afraid. Peace be with you. Like us, his disciples were frightened and confused. They were finding it hard to accept what had happened and what this would mean for them in the days, weeks, and years ahead. They, like us, needed to have the resurrected Christ leap into their hearts, filling them with the vibrant joy of his resurrection and the sure and simple peace of knowing that he is with us always. The part of tonight's liturgy that I found really lacking because of the pandemic and because of the need for us to do this by live streaming has to do with the first part of the liturgy, the liturgy of light. Usually at the Easter vigil, once the fire is blessed, once the Easter candle is lit, in that dark church where this has taken place, as the celebrant sings Christ our light, the light from the Easter candle, the light representing the resurrected Christ is shared with everybody in the church. And by the time of the third singing of Christ our light and the time of the singing of the exalted, the church has a beautiful warm light that comes from the candles, the lights of all those candles, of all those people of faith who are gathered there to rejoice and celebrate the resurrection. If this symbol tonight has been missed liturgically, let us not have it missed spiritually. Let us take that light of Christ with us from this liturgy because it is a light that we are called to have, a light that has come to us through baptism and is renewed each year in our celebration of the passion, death, and resurrection of Christ. Let us go forth carrying in us the light of Christ, a light of hope and joy to shine in the darkness of this time of pandemic, a light of resurrection, hope, and joy to shine by us on all people that we meet. God bless you. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us, that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, 
in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you have for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you to renew your baptismal promises by responding, I do, to the following questions. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may the Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Jesus has assured us that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is present in their midst, confident of God's presence among us as together we celebrate these Easter mysteries. Let us bring to him now our prayers of petition. For our church, that our celebration of the resurrection of Christ may transform and strengthen our commitment to be a resurrection people, a people of hope 
as we respond to our baptismal call to be the light of Christ for our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold positions of local, national, and global leadership, that the light of the risen Christ may encourage them in their work of building a more just and tolerant world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and suffering of our world, that they may receive comfort and help in times of distress, especially during this virus pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. During this virus pandemic, for all who are sick, lonely, isolated, or heavily bur- heavenly burdened in our homes, healthcare facilities, and hospitals, and for those who provide pa- compassionate care for them, and we pray for the protection of our healthcare professionals and first responders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Father Pat Power, and for comfort and prayers for all who mourn the loss of loved ones, that they may rest in the peace of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause now and bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this evening, both those prayers we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Offertory chant is found on page 393 in the Catholic Book of Worship, something which is known. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands and praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially those for whom we now pray. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all the saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our sat service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and accounted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, 
make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 